Okay, today, oops, uh, Mercedes W203 uh, front brake pads, um, pulled off the wear sensor. Um, I know these, these pads are pretty gone when I got it. Uh, they're not gone gone, they're not metal on metal or anything, but they're pretty close. It was like half a millimeter from hitting the wear sensor. So I pulled the wheel off, put it under the car in case anything falls. I do just have it on a jack. Uh, on a jack. Don't recommend doing that, but I'm not going under the car. So it's perfectly fine if you're not going under the car, as long as you have a jack that you can trust. And again, take the wheel off, put it under the side of the car in case anything happens. Um, so for pads, we're just going to have to pull off the... Um, the, the inner cal the, the caliper itself, we can leave the bracket attached. If you have to attach, take rotors off, you're going to have to pull the caliper mount off, which is two 18 millimeter bolts to hold the main assembly off. We're not doing that. We're just simply pulling the caliper off. So that's two 12 millimeter nuts, one here, one down there. They should not be on very tight. They should be about 20 foot pounds of torque on. So should break loose pretty easy. No thread locker on these. Although I will put thread locker on when I put them back on. Now if you've got a slight ridge on your on your brake rotor, you might not be able to get the caliper off. Take a screwdriver, put it in between the old pad and the piston, push a tiny little bit, and slide it out. Oops, and it's quiet enough. Just push the piston back a bit into its bore, and that'll allow it to slide off. Old pads here. those off and they are pretty gone it's amazing that you can negotiate like four hundred dollars off <laughs> the price of a car for a uh, fifty dollar set of pads <laughs> okay so I'm gonna leave this balanced up here it's not gonna go anywhere if you don't think you can balance your caliper um, hang it up with a with a wire of a, a, a whatever you can get a wire piece of string uh, anything okay so the little retaining clips for the pads. Let's pop those out because we want to clean them. They're the same top and bottom, same clip. And I've just got a bucket in front of me with some degreaser and a brush. So I'm just going to clean those up really quick. Because you want your pads to be all these are what the pads slide on back and forth. And you don't want them to get stuck because they'll wear out, they'll cause brake fade, they'll cause overheating brakes, blah blah blah. So nice and clean. I'm gonna do both of those. Where did I just put the second one? There it is. Like just doing pads, a thorough service on the pads and calipers should be a 15 minute job per side. So I'm gonna leave this in one shot, I'm not going to turn the camera off at all, unless Bigfoot or the Pope comes to sell me something at the door and I have to go see them. And that's the only two I'm going to turn off for. I'm not Catholic or anything, I'm just saying the Pope would be pretty cool if he showed up to sell me something. I'd probably buy it. If he's selling chocolate or something. So while those are drying, I'm going to take the caliper slider pin pop it out, wipe the dirty grease off, and I'm going to take new synthetic brake grease, put it on the end, make sure that goes into the hole properly, push it until the little rubber bellows pops back on, same with the top. Don't use regular synthetic grease, use a, a brake grease because brake grease will prevent its 
specially formulated to not like liquefy from the heat because you do get a lot of heat in your brake area. So that's done. And clean off where the clips come out. Ew, that's a little dirty. <laughs> Getting all over me. always going to be a lot dirtier because that's where stuff is going to fall down on some grease and dirt and whatever. I'm just going to blast that off with some brake cleaner. The degreaser does not evaporate and leave no traces behind, but brake cleaner does. You know, whenever you see brake cleaner on sale, buy five or six cans. It's like two or three bucks a can instead of the regular six seven eight bucks because one brake job whole can like one just to do the front you're gonna use a lot of it it's just too damn good to use so before I put those clips in I'm now gonna retract the caliper um, you can use a pair of channel locks pinch it back in you can use one of those caliper retractors um, I just use a an old C clamp it, just works properly. Never have a problem with it. It's just a lot easier. Now it should push in fairly simply. Before you do this, open up the uh, the cap on your brake fluid, the reservoir cap on the top of the brake fluid in your engine compartment to allow any air if it's being pushed back through to escape. And check your brake fluid level because this is going to push fluid back up into the reservoir and it could raise your brake fluid level too high. You're going to do this like step by step when you push it in. You're going to wind it in a little bit, give it a second to push the fluid through the line, wind it in a little bit. If it's really sticky pushing it in, which this one isn't, this is going back nicely. If it's really sticky, wind it all the way in, unwind a little bit or keep something in here like a hockey puck so that the caliper or so that the piston can't come out all the way. Push your brake pedal a few times to push this piston back out. Wind it back in. Do that two or three times and it should usually, if you've got a slightly sticky caliper, it should unstick it. If it doesn't go in nicely after doing all that, it's time to replace the caliper. It's just not worth driving on a stuck caliper. So that's now in all the way, don't like crank it, don't put 200 foot-pounds of torque on this thing. This isn't bent from doing that, this is bent from doing other things over the years. It's like 30 years old, this C-clamp. You should not have to put a lot of pressure on it whatsoever. C-clamp out. And let's just make sure this doesn't fall. I'm gonna take the two pad clips. Make sure they're seated properly in there. A little bit of gunk on that one still. And the other one. firmly in. New pads, there's going to be, on the W203, they're essentially the same pad, inner and outer. With one difference, the little mount for the wear sensor, which just goes on the inside. I'm going to take a little synthetic grease just on the two ears and slide inside of those. You can use copper grease too um, on this. Just on the two little ears, we'll slide into the pad retainer springs. And then the outer one. You don't need a ton, it's just a, the tiniest little bit to allow them to 
don't touch the pad surface with a greasy finger. We're almost done. <laughs> Slide the caliper halves back over. There's little flat spots on the slider pins, and you'll see that they can only go in one way. Oh, now I have to grab some blue thread locker. One second. Don't use the red thread locker, use blue. That looks like there might have been a, you need like a half a drop to a drop on each one. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit. Don't tighten either one until you get both in. So I'm going to tighten these up until they're snug and then put the torque wrench on them. Um, it's 18 foot pounds, 18 to 20 foot pounds that you put them onto. Inch pounds is about 215, 215 inch pounds if you have a smaller torque wrench, like a quarter inch torque wrench. It'll go up in inch pounds usually, and that's about 215 inch pounds. Just multiply foot, foot pounds by 12 for inch pounds. Torque wrench set to 20. I'm going to take the pad wear sensor, put a tiny, tiny little bit of grease around a little rubber boot on the outside. If you have electrical grease, dielectric electrical grease, you can use that too. And it's easiest, where are my needle nose, to put the little uh, sensor into the hole in the pad first. Um, if you look at it, the little sensor that goes down, that's inward, and the pad clip goes toward the outside. So I'm probably slightly in your way here. That just goes to, into the hole in the pad. And oh, come on. trying to stay out of your way, but I can't see myself. <laughs> okay, this wire sensor doesn't want to go in. Come on. Keeps twisting when it goes in. Come on, go straight in, the bugger. never have a problem with these things. This one just does not want to go in. Is it bent? No. The metal clip is fine. It's brand new, so it better be good. They usually come with the pad kits. This 
This is the most stubborn pad wear sensor I have ever seen. It just does not want to clip in. Now it went in. <laughs> okay, and then plug that into the wear sensor on your caliper. Brake cleaner to make sure no grease, grease fingerprints, whatever got on there. I'm gonna do the inner and outer. Look at that. That's well, that's mostly brake dust. And this pad cleaner or brake cleaner is empty. And I think that was it was almost a full can. No, it was about half a can, I guess, when I started. I still have to do the other side, so. And that is it. Like I said, 15 minutes. I don't know how long is this video, 10? <laughs> so that's it, we're done. Thanks for watching. Well, as I've done in the past, I always show when I screw up. I didn't screw up, but um, semi. I didn't add any anti-squeal brake grease to the back of the uh, the brake pads just a bit of a brain fart <laughs> so i noticed it the second i was done so i'm just gonna do that now you put it on just wherever the brake is gonna on the inside you put it where the brake the round brake piston touches just a little smearing of it you're not putting you're not coating everything like as you can see it's just a little smear where the fingers from the outer caliper are going to touch and then a little bit on the inside where the piston's going to touch that sensor comes out through. And now I'm going to bolt it back up to 20 pounds and I'll be done. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the, uh, <laughs> well, it wasn't really a screw up, but anyway, sorry for coming back. Thanks. As a quick addendum to this video, I'm just going to add this in because it usually doesn't get discussed. And I usually don't discuss it either because it's not that relevant anymore. And it's break, uh, bedding in of brake pads after you've changed your brake pads. I usually do it, but it's not extremely necessary anymore. Uh, it used to be because of the organic pads needing to be worn into the shape of the rotor um, with the new harder pads. It's not that relevant. It's more for rotors that have a coating on them to wear the coating off. Um, and the easiest way to do is when you first change your brake pads, go up for a drive around your neighborhood. Like, what am I doing? 40, 50 kilometers an hour come to a slow stop, increase brake pressure, little by little until you come to a complete stop. You're not doing a hard stop. Do it again, do it a few times at 40, 50 kilometers an hour, which is what, 30, 40 miles an hour. Uh, then do it a couple of times a little bit faster, a couple of times a little bit faster. Um, again, just slowing down with minimum pressure, pushing on the pad, on the brake slightly. You don't have to do it hard. And that will just allow the pad material to come into a, uh, if there's anything on the pad material from manufacturing any little defects in, in you know, it could may not be completely flat. Um, anyway, it's it's not extremely necessary, but uh, I, might as well, I figured I might as well cover it anyway. Um, this is like the fourth or fifth time, and you, you're not going to feel anything, you're not going to notice anything, but it's just... Uh, to make sure everything's bedded in properly. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching.